Hi, my name's Paul Grogan and welcome to the first in a two-part series of gaming rules videos where I'm going to be teaching you how to play Under Falling Skies, designed by Thomas Ullier and published by Czech Games Edition who sponsored this video. Under Falling Skies is a solo game of dice management and tough decisions. Each round you will roll your dice and then place them in the rooms of your base to activate them. Expanding your base gives you access to more powerful actions, allowing you to scramble fighters to shoot down enemy ships or deploy robots to increase your workforce. To win, you will need to defend your city and complete your research before the alien mothership destroys your base. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play the base game. Included in the box is a four chapter campaign mode, which I will cover in the second video. But for now, just remove all of the components from the top and leave the sealed chapters in the box. Also, although Under Falling Skies is a solo game, you can play it with more than one player working together and discussing what to do. For your first game, use the Roswell City tile, this side up. Place New York and Washington DC aside. I'll explain them later in the video. Take base tiles A and B and place them like this. The A tile should be on the top with the arrow pointing upwards and the B tile on the bottom with the arrow pointing down. This configuration is shown on the Roswell base tile. Above the base, place the four sky tiles so that the artwork lines up, using this side of the tiles with the plain grey edge. This is the setup for the easy game. If you want a more challenging game, flip over any one of the sky tiles to the other side. Place the mothership at the top of the sky tiles, and place one of the enemy alien ships on each space here. Place the four white ships off to one side. And place the orange ship back in the box, it will not be needed in your first game. From the dice, place the blue ones back in the box. I'll explain them in the second video when I cover the rules for the other cities. Place the research marker at the start of the research track. Place the energy marker on the start space of the energy track, which in this case is two. And place the damage marker at the start of the damage track. And finally, place the excavator on the indicated space here, facing in the direction shown. You are now ready to try and save humanity. Your goal is to get your research marker to the top of the research track before the aliens destroy your city, either by your damage marker reaching the bottom of its track, or the mothership descending to the row marked with the skull. Each round of the game has three phases. The dice phase in which you will roll your dice, and then one by one place them on rooms within your base. This causes the alien ships to move closer to you. After all of the dice have been placed comes the rooms phase, where you resolve the dice that you placed in whatever order you want, generating power, doing research, excavating, and so on. And then finally the mothership phase, where the alien mothership slowly advances towards you, triggering a nasty effect. At the start of the dice phase, roll your five dice. Then, one by one, you must place those dice into your base, following a number of restrictions. First, each column can only have one die in it, and since you must place all of your five dice, that means one die in each column. Second, you can only place dice before your excavator, which follows a path through your base. So in round one, you can only place dice on the first two levels of your base. And note, it is allowed to place a die on a tunnel, which is a space with no room. Third, whenever you place a white die, you must immediately re-roll all of your unplaced dice. So exactly when you use your white dice is important. For example, if you rolled this and really needed high numbers this round, you would probably want to place the white five first and hope to re-roll higher numbers on the other dice. However, if you really needed a three and a one but not the five, you might place the grey three and the grey one first, and then one of the white dice to re-roll what you have left. Immediately after placing a die and before placing your next die, all enemy ships in that column descend a number of spaces equal to the value of the die. At the start of the game, there is only one enemy ship per column, but it can happen that there is more than one ship in a column, and placing a die moves all of the ships in that column towards your base. The exception to this is any die placed on the top level of your base, which is an AA gun room, this causes the enemy ships in that column to move one space less than the value of the die. And if you place a die of value 1 in an AA room, the enemy ships do not move at all. After you have moved all ships in the column, if the space where the ship ended on has a symbol, you resolve that symbol. Note that this only applies to the space that the ship landed on, not any spaces that it moved through. The left arrow indicates that the ship moves to the left, unless that space is occupied, in which case it doesn't move. And the right arrow is for the same, but for a move to the right. The mothership symbol means that the mothership moves one space closer to you. Now, this is a bad thing because the mothership is now closer to you, 
but there are ways in which you can use this to your benefit, and I'll explain that later on. Note that if the mothership moves down onto a row containing an enemy ship, that ship is collected and returned to the mothership to be respawned later on. The explosion symbol is not a triggered effect. I'll explain this more later on, but a big part of the game is manoeuvring the enemy ships onto these symbols at just the right time. And finally, if an enemy ship descends below the sky, your base takes one damage. To show this, move the damage marker down one space. And if the damage marker moves onto the skull icon, you have lost the game. After damaging your base, the enemy ship returns to the mothership to be respawned at the end of the round. So, I've talked about placing dice in the rooms of your base, but how do you excavate more rooms? Well, once per round you may place one of your dice ahead of the excavator. This represents that you are using that die to excavate, you are not using the room where you place the die. You can excavate a number of spaces ahead up to the value of the die used. So here, if you use this 5 to excavate, you could place it on any space up to 5 spaces ahead of the excavator. And you usually want to excavate as much as possible, but there are times when you need to excavate less. For example, if you had already placed a die in this column, you would not be able to excavate up to 5 or even 4 spaces away, but you could still place the excavation die here. Note that in this phase, you are only placing your dice and moving enemy ships. You do not resolve any of your dice at this time. That happens in the rooms phase, which I'll explain next. In this phase, you must resolve the effect of each die you placed in whatever order you choose. Using a die is optional, you could just choose to remove it instead of activating the room it's in. And in fact, at the start of this phase, you can remove any dice placed in either an AA room or in a tunnel that isn't a room, as those dice will have no further effect. Apart from the multi-space rooms, each die must be resolved on its own. You cannot add the values of multiple dice together. You just choose a die, resolve it, and then remove it. Many rooms depict energy icons, indicating the amount of energy required to use the room. If you want to resolve a die in one of these rooms, you must pay the energy by moving your energy marker back on the energy track. Note that it doesn't cost you energy to place the die in the room, only to resolve the die. And remember, you can just choose to remove the die without resolving it. Also, some rooms have a modifier printed on them. This means that when you are resolving the die, you apply the modifier. For example, a 4 placed here resolves as if it was a 3. But note, when you place the die, the enemy ships still moved 4 spaces towards you, which was the value of the original die. Multi-space rooms must have dice in each of their spaces to work. If you don't have a die on each space, simply remove the other dice with no effect. But if there is a die on each space, you add the values together to resolve them. Here, for example, this room is resolved with a value of 4. 7 from the dice, and then minus 3 for the modifier. So, what do the rooms actually do? Well, I'll now go through them one at a time. The energy rooms generate, believe it or not, energy. Add the value of the room to your energy up to the maximum allowed by your energy track. So, in the example we've just seen, you would add 4 energy. Jet fighter rooms let you shoot down one or more enemy ships that are on explosion spaces with a number less than or equal to the value of the room. For example, you have a 4 on this room here. The minus 1 modifier means that this room resolves with a value of 3. You shoot down this ship here and this one here, but not this one. Enemy ships shot down are returned to the mothership to be respawned later in the round. Except for the white ships, when those are shot down, they are removed to the side of the board. Research rooms allow you to advance on the research track, which is how you win the game. The value of the room is how many research points you have, which is the die plus any modifiers. To move your research marker to the next space, cost a number of research points as shown on the space that you're moving to. And you spend the research points generated to move as many spaces as you can. For example, if you have five research points to spend, you can move two spaces up the research track spending three research points for the first space, and then one more for the second space. The last research point is wasted. Remember, if you place dice in multiple research rooms, they are not added together. They must be resolved separately, but can be resolved in any order. And note that to move to the last space of the research track requires an 11. So the only way to generate that many research points in one go is with a multi-space room. Finally, the excavator. If you place the die to excavate this turn, you may spend one energy to move the excavator to the space with the die. All spaces behind the excavator can now be used on the next round. At the start of this phase, the mothership moves one space closer towards your base. 
If there are any ships in the row where it moves to, put them on the mothership to be respawned later. Then resolve the mothership action based on the current position of the mothership as shown on the right side of the board. This symbol indicates that more enemy ships appear. Place the indicated number of white ships on the mothership. They will respawn later in this phase. This symbol indicates that there has been some kind of cave-in, probably caused by the aliens. Move your excavator backwards the indicated number of spaces. And note that the excavator cannot move back beyond its starting space. This symbol indicates that the aliens have managed to destroy some of your valuable research data. Move your research marker down the indicated number of spaces. And this symbol means that your base takes one damage. Remember, if the marker ever reaches the skull, you lose the game. And you also lose the game immediately if the mothership reaches the row with the skull. Remember earlier on when I said that it could be an advantage to you triggering the mothership moving down yourself by manoeuvring one of the enemy ships onto a mothership space? Well, in this situation, if the mothership were to move itself to here, that would cause a cave-in of two spaces, which could be bad. But if, during the turn, you moved an enemy ship onto a mothership space, that would cause the mothership to move down during the dice phase, which does not trigger the effect. And then in the mothership phase, it would move to here, adding an extra enemy ship. Still not great, but probably better for you than the cave-in. Be careful though about moving the mothership closer to you too often. Each time you do so reduces the number of rounds in the game, and it also means that enemy ships launched from the mothership have less distance to travel to your base. And note, if you cause the mothership to move to the last space, you still lose the game. The last step of the mothership phase is to respawn any ships currently on the mothership. First, spawn any purple ships one at a time, and then any white ships. Ships spawn on the drop point in columns where there are no ships first. If all columns have a ship, choose the drop point that is farthest from the highest ship in that column. And if tied, you can choose. If there are ever more ships to spawn than empty drop points, then any remaining ships stay on the mothership until the following round. To win the game, you must move your marker to the top of the research track. If you do this, you win immediately. You do not need to play out the rest of the round. You lose the game if the mothership descends to the row with the skull, or if your base takes too much damage. That's all the rules you need to play your first game with the Roswell base. In my second video, I'll explain how robots work, how to increase the threat level, and how the campaign plays. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment if you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions about the game, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you to Check Games Edition for helping to sponsor this video, and if you like the videos that I create, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Until next time, take care, and thanks for watching. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.